Have you ever taken the TOEFL exam? This channel will have you improve more your knowledge about the exam and get your full comprehensions about the TOEFL exam. I'm Madeline, hello, and I have taken the TOEFL exam for three times. So I hope that every of my videos will be up, will be interesting to you. Let's get started. Today, I am going to share with you 10 tips to prepare for the TOEFL exam. How can you get a better score? by yourself. Given the importance of the TOEFL exams to those who wish to study abroad, it is very natural that it can be daunting for respect. But it doesn't have to be as frightening as you think. As we think about just about every task, preparing the right way and, famili and familiarizing to ourselves with the process will help dispel any of our nerves. Fortunately, we taught TOEFL to hundreds of students, and long along the way, I've picked up some great tips to prepare for the TOEFL exam. First, I will get to know the format. No matter how great your English may be, it's still possible to be thrown off by the format of a test. Spend some time on the official TOEFL site to get familiar with the way it works and to find the information you need. Note that there are two ways for you to take a test, the internet-based test or IBT and the paper-based test, the BPT. The former is much more popular nowadays and is likely the one you're doing, you will be doing. But just in case, here's how it is set out. The internet-based test follows this format that we far skill, reading, listening, speaking, and writing. With reading, you will have 56 questions and you will have 60 to 80 minutes. With listening skill, you will have 51 questions with 60 to 90 minutes. With speaking, we have take task, six tasks with 20 minutes. With writing, we have two essays in 50 minutes. On the other hand, the paper-based test take the following format. Listening, 50 questions, 30 to 40 minutes. Writing, 40 questions to 25 minutes. Reading, 50 question to 55 minutes. Test of written English, one essay will take you 30 minutes. By simply becoming more familiar with the layout of the test, you will feel much more prepared and know better what to expect on the day, on that day. Two, pick up a study guide. Another fantastic way of preparing for TOEFL is by getting your hands on a study guide a good TOEFL book will walk you through all the sessions, giving sales advice, strategy pointers, practice questions, and example answers. There's a whole range of good TOEFL books out there, and a whole lot of not so good ones too. Luckily for you, we've written about the best ones here. 3. Create a study routine. While in advance of your test ideally, by drawing up a schedule, and sticking to it, you will save so much time and get a lot more done. Rather than procrastinating for five hours, simply put your head down and study for one year or two. I recommend starting off with just an hour each day. If your test is a few months away, then as your test comes closer, perhaps rent this up to, or to two or three hours in this final week um, before your exam. You can let lighten to shift the schedule again to spending an hour or less fine turning your skill. Ideally, you will not have to cram for your exam, as you will be prepared thanks to your routine. 4. Read and listen to your English outside of TOEFL. None of your TOEFL revision has to be TOEFL specific. After all, that is a test that got that gauges, that gauges, your real world English, gauges, not just your grammatical accuracy, by exposing yourself to everyday English, you will find yourself doing a lot of passive learning, try reading novel or comic books, watching YouTube videos and movies, and even listening to songs, is not only entertaining, but you will accidentally and naturally learn a lot too. Five, I have um, another tip is practice speaking, even to yourself. Speaking a language is often the hardest part 
for most of it. It is not what is technically so difficult, but it can be very embarrassing if we lack confidence. As well as that, when we speak, we don't have so much time to think, so we can make mistakes. But here's something to remember. Every single speaker in the world, no matter their language, makes mistakes. Trust me, I make mistakes all the time when I speak in English. It's a language I've raised in, and I bet you too. Make mistakes in your first language, but you don't let them bother us because we're, we are usually more confident. With what in mind, try to get some more or some speaking practice in. If you don't feel comfortable talking to another person, talk to yourself. In tough YBT, you will be speaking into the microphone after all, and nobody will be listening to your, to your life. That's a very good way for you. Or maybe you can record your voice and you hear it back, or maybe you can um, call with someone else, I mean call um, another account and you just talk with them. Six. Practice time writing. Writing under a time limit can be very stressful. I remember when I sat exams at school and university. I spent most of my time just thinking of an idea. And then I have to fiercely write an essay in 15 minutes just to beat the deadline. One thing I always encourage my students to do is to sometimes set time limits when they practice writing. This will have you manage your time better. Allowing a certain amount of planning your writings enough time to actually write the thing and enough to check your work over when you're done. Seven tips. Tip number seven. You practice note taking. Why? And then TOEFL test, you only get to um, one chance to listen to an audio clip before answering questions or having to speak about them. With that in mind, you will have to Take note as the clip plays to remind yourself what was said, but very few people can write at a speed of speech. So becoming a keynote taker is the key. And luckily, I have a little hack for you. Keyword notes. And here an example. The sentence, my name is Sean, I'm 30 years old, and I'm from Ireland, had 12 words, and it took me a little 10 seconds to write. Yet, just three seconds to say. But what's the key information? Sean, 30, and Ireland. Make it even shorter in your notes. Sean, 30, Ir. By only making a note of key information, you can piece the rest together logically in your head. Start up by listening to simple audio clips on YouTube or elsewhere. Practice taking down the key information while making sure that you still understand the clip at large. When you're done listening, try to use these notes to piece together the story and clip again. You can even take notes in your own language if it's easier for you. As you practice more, increase the difficulty level and see how you do it. Tip number eight, practice test, practice test, practice test. I can't shred this one enough, one every week or two, or maybe even more regularly. Set some time aside to complete not just practice questions, but a full practice test. That is again to have familiarized yourself with the entire test experience, as well as giving yourself a chance to hone your technique and skill. Practice really is the very best preparation by the time your actual test comes around. You will be also used to the experience that you are not put off by any part of it. Tip number nine, make a game of it. Test preparation doesn't have to be all discipline, focus and pressure all the time. When you get a chance to line up the work a little, take it. The thing about turning learning into a game is that it makes it more memorable making a greater impact than simply reading something in a study guide. For something like learning vocabulary, try and play some Scrabble, Pictionary, or 30 seconds. For speaking practice, try to memorize the lyrics or the song and record yourself. Do whatever makes it fun and memorable. 10. 
don't get QWERTY keyboard. Don't forget that keyboard. That is one that I never appreciate until the ask student told me. The QWERTY computer keyboard is challenging if you're not used to it. I grew up with it and I'm taking it for granted ever since I learned to type. If you're taking the TOEFL IBT though, you will be doing so on uh, one of these keyboards. So try to get as much practice as it possible and as possible. The last, last thing you want to is, is to run out of time for an essay because you're being time typing slowly. Don't let that happen, okay? So that every tips that I can give you about raising your score that you can learn by yourself about TOEFL exam. Let's get started. Today, I am going to share with you 10 tips to prepare for the TOEFL exam. How can you get a better score by yourself? Given the importance of the TOEFL exams to those who wish to study abroad, it is very natural that it can be daunting for respect. But it doesn't have to be as frightening as you think. As we think about just about every task, preparing the right way and, familiar, and familiarizing to ourselves with the process will help dispel any of our nerves. Fortunately, we taught TOEFL to hundreds of students and long along the way I've to pick up some great tips to prepare for the TOEFL exam. First, I will get to know the format. No matter how great your English may be, it's still possible to be thrown off by the format of a test. Spend some time on the official TOEFL site to get familiar with the way it works and to find the information you need. Note that there are two ways for you to take a test, the internet-based test or IBT and the paper-based test, the BPT. The former is much more popular nowadays and is likely the one you're doing, you will be doing. But just in case, here's how it is set out. The internet-based test follows this format that we far go reading, listening, speaking, and writing. For reading, you will have 56 questions, and you will have 60 to 80 minutes. With listening skill, you will have 51 questions with 60 to 90 minutes. With speaking, we have take task, six tasks with 20 minutes. With writing, we have two essays in 50 minutes. On the other hand, the paper-based test take the following format. Listening, 50 questions, 30 to 40 minutes. Writing, 40 questions to 25 minutes. Reading, 50 questions to 55 minutes. Test of written English, one essay will take you 30 minutes. By simply becoming more familiar with the layout of the test, you will feel much more prepared and know better what to expect on the day, on that day. Two, pick up a study guide. Another fantastic way of preparing for TOEFL is by getting your hands on a study guide. A good TOEFL book will walk you through all the sessions, giving sales advice, strategy pointers, practice questions, and example answers. There's a whole range of good TOEFL books out there, and a whole lot of not so good ones too. Luckily for you, we've written about the best ones here. Three. Create a study routine while in advance of your test ideally by drawing up a schedule and sticking to it, you will save so much time and get a lot more done. Rather than procrastinating for five hours, simply put your head down and study for one year or two. I recommend starting off with just an hour each day if your test is a few months away, then as your test comes closer. Perhaps rent this up to, or to two or three hours. In this final week um, before your exam, you can let lighten to shift the schedule again to spending an hour or less fine turning your skill. Ideally, you will not have to cram for your exam as you will be prepared thanks to your routine. Four, read and listen to your English outside of TOEFL. None of your TOEFL revision has to be TOEFL specific. After all, that is a test that got that gauges that gauges your real world English gauges. 
Not just your grammatical accuracy, by exposing yourself to everyday English, you will find yourself doing a lot of passive learning. Try reading novels or comic books, watching YouTube videos and movies, and even listening to songs is not only entertaining, but you will accidentally and naturally learn a lot too. Five, I have、um, another tip is practice speaking, even to yourself. Speaking a language is often the hardest part for most of it. It is not what is technically so difficult, but it can be very embarrassing if we lack confidence. As well as that, when we speak, we don't have so much time to think, so we can make mistakes. But here, something to remember: every single speaker in the world, no matter their language, makes mistakes. Trust me, I make mistakes all the time when I speak in English. It's the language I've raised in, and I bet you too. Make mistake in your first language, but you don't let them bother us because we we are usually more confident. With what in mind, try to get some more or some speaking practice. And if you don't feel comfortable talking to another person, talk to yourself. In tough YBT, you will be speaking into the microphone after all, and nobody will be listening to your to your life. That's a very good way for you. Or maybe you can record your voice and you hear it back. Or maybe you can、um, call with someone else. I mean, call、um, another account and you just talk with them. Six, practice time writing. Writing under a time limit can be very stressful. I remember when I sat exams at school and university. I spent most of my time just thinking of an idea, and then I have to furiously write an essay in fifteen minutes just to beat the deadline. One thing I always encourage my students to do is to sometimes set time limits when they practice writing. This will help you manage your time better, allowing a certain amount of planning your writings enough time to actually write the thing, and enough to check your work over when you're done. Seven tips. Tip number seven: You practice note taking. Why? And then TOEFL test, you only get to、um, one chance to listen to an audio clip before answering questions, or having to speak about them. With that in mind, you will have to take notes as the clip plays to remind yourself what was said. But very few people can write at a speed of speech, so becoming a keen note taker is the key. And luckily. I have a little hack for you, keyword notes. And here an example: the sentence "My name is Sean. I'm 30 years old and I'm from Ireland." Had 12 words, and it took me a little 10 seconds to write. Yet, just three seconds to say. But what's the key information? Sean, 30, and Ireland. Make it even shorter in your notes. Sean, 30, Ireland. By only making a note of key information, you can piece the rest together logically in your head. Start up by listening to simple audio clips on YouTube or elsewhere. Practice taking down the key information while making sure that you still understand the clip at large. When you're done listening, try to use these notes to piece together the story and clip again. You can even take notes in your own language if it's easier for you. As you practice more, increase the difficulty level and see how you do it. Tip number eight: practice test, practice test, practice test. I can't stress this one enough. One every week or two, or maybe even more regularly. Set some time aside to complete not just practice questions, but a full practice test. That is again to have familiarized yourself with the entire task experience, as well as giving yourself a chance to hone your technique and skill. Practice really is the very best preparation. By the time your actual test comes around, you will be also used to the experience that you are not put off by any part of it. Tip number nine: Make a game of it. Test preparation. Doesn't have to be all discipline, focus, and pressure all the time. When you get a chance to line up the work a little, take it. 
The thing about turning learning into a game is that it makes it more memorable, making a greater impact than simply reading something in a study guide. For something like learning vocabulary, try and play some Scrabble, Pictionary, or 30 seconds. For speaking practice, try to memorize the lyrics or the song and record it yourself. Do whatever makes it fun and memorable. 10. Don't get QWERTY keyboard. Don't forget that keyboard. That is one that I never appreciate until the ex student told me. The QWERTY computer keyboard is challenging if you're not used to it. I grew up with it and I'm taking it for granted ever since I learned to type. If you're taking the TOEFL IBT though, you will be doing so on uh, one of these keyboards. So try to get as much practice as it possible and as possible. The last, last thing you want to is, is to run out of time for an essay because you're being time typing slowly. Don't let that happen, okay? So that every tips that I can give you about raising your score that you can learn by yourself about TOEFL exam. Hope you will like it. Let's get started. Today, I am going to share with you 10 tips to prepare for the TOEFL exam. How can you get a better score by yourself? Given the importance of the TOEFL exams to those who wish to study abroad, it is very natural that it can be daunting for respects. But it doesn't have to be as frightening as you think. As we read about just about every task, preparing the right way and familiar and familiarizing to yourself with the process will help dispel any of our nerves. Fortunately, we taught TOEFL to hundreds of students and long along the way I have to pick up some great tips to prepare for the TOEFL exam. First, I will get to know the format. No matter how great your English may be, it's still possible to be thrown off by the format of a test. Spend some time on the official TOEFL site to get familiar with the way it work and to find the information you need. Note that there are two ways for you to take a test, the internet-based test or IBT and the paper-based test, the BPT. The former is much more popular nowadays and is likely the one you're doing, you will be doing. But just in case, here's how it is set out. The internet-based test follows this format. That will be far skill, reading, listening, speaking, and writing. With reading, you will have 56 questions, and you will have 60 to 80 minutes. With listening skill, you will have 51 questions with 60 to 90 minutes. With speaking, we have take task, six tasks with 20 minutes. With writing, we have two essays in 50 minutes. On the other hand, the paper-based test takes the following format. Listening 50 questions, 30 to 40 minutes. Writing 40 questions to 25 minutes. Reading 50 questions to 55 minutes. Test of Reading's English, one essay will take you 30 minutes. By simply becoming more familiar with the layout of the test, you will feel much more prepared and know better what to expect on the day, on that day. Two, pick up a study guide Another fantastic way of preparing for TOEFL is by getting your hand on a study guide. A good TOEFL book will walk you through all the sessions, giving sales advice, strategy pointers, practice questions, and example answers. There's a whole range of good TOEFL books out there, and a whole lot of not so good ones too. Luckily for you, we've written about the best ones here. Three. Create a study routine well in advance of your test ideally by drawing up a schedule and sticking to it you will save so much time and get a lot more done rather than procrastinating for five hours simply put your head down and study for one year or two I recommend starting off with just an hour each day if your test is a few months away then as your test comes closer Perhaps brand this up to, or to two or three hours. In this final week um, before your exam, 
you can let lightings to shift the schedule again to spending an hour or less fine turning your skill. Ideally, you will not have to cram for your exam, as you will be prepared thanks to your routine. Four, read and listen to your English outside of TOEFL. None of your TOEFL revision has to be TOEFL specific. After all, that is a test that got that gauges that gauges your real world English gauges. Not just your grammatical accuracy, by exposing yourself to everyday English, you will find yourself doing a lot of passive learning. Try reading novel or comic books, watching YouTube videos and movies, and even listening to songs is not only entertaining, but you will accidentally and naturally learn a lot too. Five, I have um, another tip is part is speaking, even to yourself. Speaking a language is often the hardest part for most of it, it is not what is technically so difficult, but it can be very embarrassing if we lack confidence. As well as that, when we speak, we don't have so much time to think, so we can make mistakes. But here, something to remember: every single speaker in the world, no matter their language, makes mistakes. Trust me, I make mistakes all the time when I speak in English. As a language I've raised in, and I bet you too, make mistakes in your first language, but you don't let them bother us because we we are usually more confident. With what in mind, try to get some more or some speaking practice in. If you don't feel comfortable talking to another person, talk to yourself. In tough YBT, you will be speaking into the microphone after all, and nobody will be listening to your to your life. That's a very good way for you. Or maybe you can record your voice and you hear it back. Or maybe you can um, call with someone else. I mean, call um, another account and you just talk with them. Six, practice time writing. Writing under a time limit can be very stressful. I remember when I sat exams at school and university. I spent most of my time just thinking of an idea. And then I have to fiercely write an essay and 15 minutes just to beat the deadline. One thing I always encourage my students to do is to sometimes set time limits when they practice writing. This will have you manage your time better, allowing a certain amount of planning to your writings enough time to actually write the thing and enough to check your work over when you're done. Seven tips. Tip number seven. You practice note-taking. Why? And then tough for test, you only get to um, one chance to listen to an audio clip before answering questions or having to speak about them. With that in mind, you will have to take notes as the clip plays to remind yourself what was said, but very few people can write at a speed of speech. So becoming a keynote taker is the key. And luckily, I have a little hack for you. Keyword notes. And here an example. The sentence, my name is Sean, I'm 30 years old, and I'm from Ireland. Had 12 words, and it took me a little 10 seconds to write. Yet, just 3 seconds to say. But what's the key information? Sean, 30, and Ireland. Make it even shorter in your notes. Sean, 30, Ireland. By only making a note of key information, you can piece the rest together logically in your head. Start up by listening to simple audio clips on YouTube or elsewhere. Practice taking down the key information while making sure that you still understand the clip at large. When you're done listening, try to use these notes to piece together the story and clip again. You can even take notes in your own language if it's easier for you. As you practice more, increase the difficulty level and see how you do it. Tip number eight, practice test, practice test, practice test. I can't shred this one enough, one every week or two, or maybe even more regularly. Set some time aside to complete not just practice questions, but a full practice test. 
it is again to have familiarized yourself with the entire task experience, as well as giving yourself a chance to hone your technique and skill. Practice really is the very best preparation. By the time your actual test comes around, you will be also used to the experience that you are not put off by any part of it. Test number nine, make a game of it. Test preparation doesn't have to be all discipline, focus and pressure all the time. When you get a chance to line up the work a little, take it. The thing about turning learning into a game is that it makes it more memorable, making a greater impact than simply reading something in a study guide. For something like learning vocabulary, try and play some Scrabble, Pictionary, or 30 seconds. For speaking practice, try to memorize the lyrics or the song and record it yourself. Do whatever makes it fun and memorable. 10. Don't get QWERTY keyboard. Don't forget that keyboard. That is one that I never appreciate until the ex student told me. The QWERTY computer keyboard is challenging if you're not used to it. I grew up with it and I'm taking it for granted ever since I learned to type. If you're taking the TOEFL IBT though, you will be doing so on uh, one of these keyboards. So try to get as much part of that as possible and as possible. The last, last thing you want to is, is to run out of time for an essay because you're being time piping slowly. Don't let that happen, okay? So that every test I can give you about raising your score that you can learn by yourself about TOEFL exam, how you will like it. Let's get started. Today, I am going to share with you 10 tips to prepare for the TOEFL exam. How you can get a better score by yourself. Given the importance of the TOEFL exams to those who wish to study abroad, it is very natural that it can be daunting for respect. But it doesn't have to be as frightening as you think. As we think about just about every task, preparing the right way and, famili and familiarizing yourself with the process will help dispel any of our nerves. Fortunately, we taught TOEFL to hundreds of students and long along the way, I've picked up some great tips to prepare for the TOEFL exam. First, I will get to know the format. No matter how great your English may be, it's still possible to be thrown off by the format of the test. Spend some time on the official TOEFL site to get familiar with the way it works and to find the information you need. Note that there are two ways for you to take a test the internet-based test or IBT and the paper-based test, the BPT. The former is much more popular nowadays and is likely the one you're doing, you will be doing. But just in case, here's how it is set out. The internet-based test follows this format that we far skill reading, listening, speaking, and writing. For reading, you will have 56 questions and you will have 60 to 80 minutes. With listening skill, you will have 51 questions with 60 to 90 minutes. With speaking, we have take task, six tasks with 20 minutes. With writing, we have two essays in 50 minutes. On the other hand, the paper-based test takes the following format. Listening, 50 questions, 30 to 40 minutes. Writing, 40 questions to 25 minutes. Reading, 50 questions to 55 minutes. Test of Rudin's English, one essay will take you 30 minutes. By simply becoming more familiar with the layout of the test, you will feel much more prepared and know better what to expect on the day, on that day. Two, pick up a study guide. Another fantastic way of preparing for TOEFL is by getting your hand on a study guide. A good TOEFL book will walk you through all the sessions giving sales advice, strategy pointers, practice questions, and example answers. There's a whole range of good TOEFL books out there and a whole lot of not so good ones too. Luckily for you, we written about the best ones here. Three, create a study routine. 
while in advance of your test ideally by drawing up a schedule and sticking to it you will save so much time and get a lot more done rather than procrastinating for five hours simply put your head down and study for one year or two i recommend starting off with just an hour each day if your test is a few months away then as your test comes closer perhaps brand this up to, or to two or three hours in this final week um, before your exam you can let lighten to shift the schedule again to spending an hour or less fine turning your skill ideally you will not have to cram for your exam as you will be prepared thanks to your routine four really listen to your english sound side of TOEFL none of your TOEFL revision has to be TOEFL specific after all that is a test that got that gauges that gauges your real world English gauges not just your grammatical accuracy by exposing yourself to everyday English you will find yourself doing a lot of passive learning try reading novel or comic books watching YouTube videos and movies and even listening to songs is not only entertaining but you will accidentally and naturally learn a lot too. Five, I have um, another tip is part is speaking, even to yourself. Speaking a language is often the hardest part for most of it. It is not what is technically so difficult, but it can be very embarrassing if we lack confidence. As well as that, when we speak, we don't have so much time to think, so we can make mistakes. But here's something to remember. Every single speaker in the world, no matter their language, makes mistakes. Trust me, I make mistakes all the time when I speak in English. It's a language I've raised in, and I bet you too. Make mistakes in your first language, but you don't let them bother us because we're, we are usually more confident. With what in mind, try to get some more or some speaking practice in. If you don't feel comfortable talking to another person, talk to yourself. In TOEFL IBT, you will be speaking into the microphone after all, and nobody will be listening to your, to your life. That's a very good way for you. Or maybe you can record your voice and you hear it back, or maybe you can um, call with someone else, I mean call um, another account and you just talk with them. Six. Practice time writing. Writing under a time limit can be very stressful. I remember when I sat exams at school and university. I spent most of my time just thinking of an idea, and then I have to fiercely write an essay in 15 minutes just to beat the deadline. One thing I always encourage my students to do is to sometimes set time limits when they practice writing. This will have your manager time better. Allowing a certain amount of planning your writings enough time to actually write the thing and enough to check your work over when you're done. Seven tips. Tip number seven. You practice note taking. Why? In the top four tests, you only get to um, one chance to listen to an audio clip before answering questions or having to speak about them. With that in mind, you will have to take notes as the clip plays to remind yourself what was said but very few people can write at a speed of speech so becoming a keynote taker is the key and luckily I have a little hack for you keyword notes and here an example the sentence my name is Sean I'm 30 years old and I'm from Ireland had 12 words and it took me a little 10 second to write Yet, just three seconds to say. But what's the key information? Sean, 30, and Ireland. Make it even shorter in your notes. Sean, 30, Ire. By only making a note of key information, you can piece the rest together logically in your head. Start up by listening to simple audio clubs on YouTube or elsewhere. Practice taking down the key information while making sure that you still understand the clip at large. 
When you're done listening, try to use these notes to piece together the story and clip again. You can even take notes in your own language if it's easier for you. As you practice more, increase the difficulty level and see how you do it. Tip number eight, practice test, practice test, practice test. I can't shred this one enough, one every week or two, or maybe even more regularly. Set some time aside to complete not just practice questions, but a full practice test. That is again to have familiarize yourself with the entire task experience, as well as giving yourself a chance to hone your technique and skill. Practice really is the very best preparation. By the time your actual test comes around, you will be also used to the experience that you are not put off by any part of it. Tip number nine: Make a game of it. Test preparation doesn't have to be all discipline, focus, and pressure all the time. When you get a chance to line up the work a little, take it. The thing about turning learning into a game is that it makes it more memorable, making a greater impact than simply reading something in a study guide. For something. Like learning vocabulary, try and play some Scrabble, Pictionary, or thirty seconds. For speaking practice, try to memorize the lyrics or the song, and record it yourself. Do whatever makes it fun and memorable. Ten, don't get QWERTY keyboard. Don't forget that keyboard. That is one that I never appreciated until the ex student told me. The QWERTY computer keyboard is challenging if you're not used to it. I grew up with it, and I'm taking it for granted ever since I learned to type. If you're taking the TOEFL IBT, though, you will be doing so on、uh, one of these keyboards. So try to get as much practice as it possible in as possible. The last last thing you want to is to, is to run out of time for an essay because you're being typing typing slowly. Don't let that happen, okay? So that every tips I can give you about raising your score that you can learn by yourself about TOEFL exam. Hope you will like it. Next part about six tips for teaching TOEFL online. My response was a teacher needs to not look for specific gaps. As the main weakness of the overall market is simply a lack of qualified and visible online tutor, I mentioned that even though TOEFL test is taken more than a million times a year, there is really just a small handful of talented and highly visible TOEFL tutor online. Therefore, even those teachers will, with the required expertise and a decent online footprint, can attract enough clients to keep themselves busy for a long time. So, how does it once acquire this expertise and get noticed online? Well, here what I has worked for me. First, I have to read everything. Read everything to teach the TOEFL test. You need to know the TOEFL test. Eventually, you should read everything published by ETS about the TOEFL. My story by getting copy of both official IBT test books. Make sure you get the most recent version. Look for their screen covers. Go through these two books with a highlighters and notepad, and try for diagrams and ten tests that it contained. Read the passages and question line by line, and word by word. This will teach you the techniques ETS uses to create TOEFL test items every week. Note how details and examples are presented in each question type. You will learn that the TOEFL is the very fun, funny leg. Test and that you can use the formulas to demystify, demystify the test for your students. Surprisingly, a lot of teachers and content writer haven't done this, which weakens their materials and methods. Another source of information is the official guide to be TOEFL. It describes the test in details and content for more practice and tests you can pore over.
just be careful with the very first practice test, as it was created even before the launch of IBT back in 2006 and contained a few inaccuracies. As you continue your reading, you will learn the ETS has published a research article about every aspect of the test, as well as book line studies of the software used to ultimately score in the speaking and writing session of the test. This will will increase your level of expertise. Perhaps in a future article, I will provide a reading list of items for TOEFL tutors who really want to get into the weeds. Next step four, um, you should be very careful when using the above strategy to analyze an official third-party TOEFL textbook as many of them are in inaccuracy and flawed. Two, understand grammar. Don't be sort of teacher that says that's just how we say it in English. When a student asks a question about a certain correction, try to become a grammar expert as well as a TOEFL expert. Everyone makes mistakes, of course, but you should learn the proper terminology and rules needed to explain why you have made a certain correction to a student practice, essay, or a recording for this purpose. I strongly recommend finding a copy of my Swant and Practical English Usage. It contains easy to understand answers to almost all of the grammar questions my students ask me. The news fourth edition even contains a special session dedicated to the most common problems. 3. Have an online footprint. Your website. Once your app must master the design of the TOEFL ETS, start writing about it. Launch a website and publish details article on a regular basis. Students are hungry for food. Articles that help them understand the test and improve their score. It is, of course, how you will start getting client clients. If you provide a tons of good content, you will eventually get a tons of readers. And set a few advertisements for your paid services and few of those readers will contact you. This will this makes it possible to get customer without using paid advertising or worse than yet, a middleman tutoring agency. As you do this, try to avoid annoying people who stop like giant pop over the advertisement for your um, newsletter. Don't try to force everyone into a sale funnel. Don't write CEO. SEO rich content. No one likes those things. Just write um, good contents and make a very difference. Turn yourself into a content factory and it will pay off in the long run. 4. Have an online fridge brain. Your social medias, you should also produce contents for um, the big social medias outlets like on YouTube, like on Facebook, um, like on the other platform that you can. I suppose Facebook and YouTube are the most important, but new outlets are always emerging. Be careful with the method. It was once very easy to rely on Facebook and YouTube for a steady stream of clients. What that is still an option, relying solely on them is more difficult than it was in the past. Both spaces are a lot more crowded now and their um, algorithm have been adjusted to demand a constant stream of content creation. It can be um, a bit overwhelming to keep up more than a few experienced TOEFL teachers who want to rely on YouTube and Facebook leads have contacted me recently wondering why no one can find them anyone. For this reason, I recommend pursuing a combination of social media strategy and a personal website which you have total control of. Over. 5. Cultivate word of mouth. Word of mouth is personal blog post can really help your business. This might sound strange to some readers since personal blog died off in the United States more than a decade ago, but they are still really popular in non-English markets. Students who seem to contact me out of the blue often tell me 
that um, they read about me on the blog of an international student from this country. Have you managed to develop meaningful personal relationships with um, your clients? Try gently asking them to mention your online. This compare favorably to the trends of getting students to post endorsements on Facebook. I see a lot of great comments about teacher on the big top of Facebook group, but those lovely comments are sink down into the algorithm, black hole within 48 hours, never to be seen again. Six, remember to take the TOEFL. If you're stick with this TOEFL, remember who is actually taking the TOEFL. Official statistics are not available, but it seems that the IELTS is much more popular English test. Meanwhile, the new Duolingo English test is chipping away at both of those tests. So, who actually takes the TOEFL in 2021? Well, a majority of test takers seems to be based in East Asia, especially China, Korea, and Japan. In addition, the test is taken by a huge number of pharmacists in the USA with overseas credentials. If you want to be successful teaching TOEFL online, you should figure out how to reach those demographics. The first three are intense, interestingly, um, the three countries least are likely to heavily use American social media networks. Next, keep your finger on the pulse. If your schedule permits, I recommend that you do 30 minutes or an hour of real pro bono work each day. This might mean answering questions on Facebook or Reddit or even more niche network like Quora or Clubhouse. This will have you present yourself as an expert in the TOEFL fields, but it will also have you keep up your uh, what student actually needs. The chanting needs the students in the elements of tutoring that is often overlooked. The emergence of new edtech over the past few years means that um, not everyone is looking for generalists who can teach them about the whole test. Instead, um, some student designers, specific um, specialists who can help them with specific aspects of their proposition. The only way to actually keep up these trends is to come in contact with as many students as possible. Anyhow, I realize now that this is all big picture stuff. It doesn't really go into the nitty gritty of day to day te teaching, lesson planning, technology use scheduling, paid advertising, and so on. Hopefully, I will have a few words to share about those things in the future article. I will get that in the link below, and I hope you will read that. That's all for my tips for teaching. Next part about six tips for teaching TOEFL online. My response was a teacher needs to not look for specific gaps, as the main weakness of the overall market is simply a lack of qualified and visible online tutor. I mentioned that even though TOEFL test is taken more than a million times a year, there is really just a small handful of talented and highly visible TOEFL tutor online. Therefore, even those teachers will, with the required expertise and a decent online footprint, can attract enough clients to keep themselves busy for a long time. So, how does it one acquire this expertise and get noticed online? Well, here what I has worked for me. First, I have to read everything. Read everything. To teach the TOEFL test, you need to know the TOEFL test. Eventually, you should read everything published by ETS about the TOEFL, by start by getting copy of both official IBT test books, Make sure you get the most recent version. Look for their screen covers. Go through these two books with a highlighters and notepads and try for diagrams and 10 tests that it contained. Read the passages and question line by line and word by word. This will teach you the techniques ETS used to create TOEFL test items every week. 
Note how details and examples are presented in each question type. Here we learn that the TOEFL is the very form formulaic test and that you can use the formulas to demystify. demystify the test for your students. Surprisingly, a lot of teachers and content writers haven't done this, which weakens their materials and methods. Another source of information is the official guide to be TOEFL. It describes the test in details and content for more practice and tests you can pour over. Just be careful with the very first practice test, as it was created even before the launch of IBT back in 2006 and contained a few inaccuracies. As you continue your reading, you will learn the ETS has published a research article about every aspect of the test, as well as book line studies of the software used to automatically score in the speaking and writing session of the test. This will will increase your level of expertise, perhaps in a future article. I will provide a reading list of items for TOEFL tutors who really want to get into the weeds. Note that for um, you should be very careful when using the above strategy to analyze an official third-party TOEFL textbook as many of them are in inaccuracy and flawed. 2. Understand grammar. Dummy sort of teacher that says that's just how we say it in English. When a student asks a question about a certain correction, try to become a grammar expert as well as a TOEFL expert. Everyone makes mistakes, of course, but you should learn the proper terminology and rules needed to explain why you have made a certain correction to a student practice essay or recording for this purpose. I strongly recommend finding a copy of my course one and practical English usage. It contains easy to understand answers to almost all of the grammar questions my students ask me. The news board edition even contains a special session dedicated to the most common problems. 3. Have an online footprint. Your website. Once you have mastered the design of the TOEFL test, start writing about it. Launch a website and publish details article on a regular basis. Students are hungry for food. Articles that help them understand the test and improve their score. It is, of course, how you will start getting client clients. If you provide tons of good content, you will eventually get a tons of readers. Instead of few advertisements for your paid services and few of those readers will contact you. This will this makes it possible to get customer without using paid advertising or worse than yet, a middleman tutoring agency. As you do this, try to avoid annoying people who stop like giant pop over the advertisement for your um, newsletter. Don't try to force everyone into a sale funnel. Don't write CEO. SEO rich content. No one likes those things. Just write um, good contents and make a very difference. Turn yourself into a content factory and it will pay off in the long run. Four, have an online fridge screen. Your social medias, you should also produce contents for um, the big social medias outlets like on YouTube, like on Facebook, um, like on the other platform that you can. I suppose Facebook and YouTube are the most important, but new outlets are always emerging. Be careful with the method. It was once very easy to rely on Facebook and YouTube for a steady stream of clients. What that is still an option, relying solely on them is more difficult than it was in the past. Those spaces are a lot more crowded now and their um, algorithm have been adjusted to demand a constant stream of content creation. It can be um, a bit overwhelming to keep up more than a few experienced TOEFL teachers who once rely on YouTube and Facebook leads 
have contacted me recently, wondering why no one can find them anyone. For this reason, I recommend pursuing a combination of social media strategy and a personal website which you have total control of. Over. Five, cultivate word of mouth. Word of mouth is personal blog post can really help your business. This might sound strange to some readers since personal blog died off in the United States more than a decade ago. But they are still really popular in non-English markets. Students who seem to contact me out of the blue often tell me that、um, they read about me on the blog of an international student from their country. If you manage to develop meaningful personal relationships with、um, your clients, try gently asking them to mention your online. This compare favorably to the trends of getting students to post endorsements on Facebook. I see a lot of great comments about teacher on the big topple Facebook group, but those lovely comments are sink down into the algorithm, black hole within 48 hours, never to be seen again. Six, remember to take the topple. If you stick with the topple. Remember who is actually taking the TOEFL. Official statistics are not available, but it seems that the IELTS is much more popular English test. Meanwhile, the new Duolingo English test is chipping away at both of those tests. So, who actually takes the TOEFL in 2021? Well, a majority of test takers seems to be based in East Asia. Especially China, Korea, and Japan. In addition, the test is taken by a huge number of pharmacists in the USA with overseas credentials. If you want to be successful teaching TOEFL online, you should figure out how to reach those demographics. The first three are, and hence, interestingly,、um, the three country least likely to heavily use American social media networks. Next, keep your finger on the pulse. If your schedule permits, I recommend that you do 30 minutes or an hour of real pro bono work each day. This might mean answering questions on Facebook or Reddit or even more niche network like Quora or Clubhouse. This will help you present yourself as an expert in the TOEFL fields, but it will also help you keep up your、uh, what students actually need. The chanting needs the students in the elements of tutoring that is often overlooked. The emergence of new edtech over the past few years means that、um, not everyone is looking for generalists who can teach them about the whole test. Instead,、um, some students desire specific、um, specialists who can help them with specific aspects of their preparation. The only way to actually keep up these trends is to come in contact with as many students as possible. Anyhow, I realize now that this is all big picture stuff. It doesn't really go into the nitty gritty of day to day teaching, lesson planning, technology use, scheduling, paid advertising, and so on. Hopefully, I will have few words to share about those things in the future article. I will get that in the link below, and I hope you will read that. That's all for my tips for teaching TOEFL online. So, who actually takes the TOEFL in 2021? Well, a majority of test taker seems to be based in East Asia, especially China, Korea, and Japan. In addition, the test is taken by a huge number of pharmacists in the USA with overseas credentials. If you want to be successful teaching TOEFL online, you should figure out how to reach those demographics. The first three are, and hence, interestingly,、um, the three country least likely to heavily use American social media networks. Next. Keep your finger on the pulse. 
If you schedule permits, I recommend that you do 30 minutes or an hour of real pro bono work each day. This might mean answering questions on Facebook or Reddit or even more niche network like Quora or Clubhouse. This will have you present yourself as an expert in the TOEFL fields, but it will also have you keep up your uh, what students actually need. The chanting needs the students in the elements of tutoring that is often overlooked. The emergence of new edtech over the past few years means that um, not everyone is looking for generalists who can teach them about the whole test. Instead, um, some student designer specific, um, specialists who can help them with specific aspects of their proposition. The only way to actually keep up these trends is to come in contact with as many students as possible. Anyhow, I realize now that this is all big picture stuff. It doesn't really go into the nitty gritty of day to day teaching, lesson planning, technology use, scheduling, paid advertising, and so on. Hopefully, I will have a few words to share about those things in a future article. I will get that in the link below, and I hope you will read that. That's all for my tips for teaching TOEFL online.